Okay, this week we're looking at an absolute classic of a board game, one well, I'm sure many of you have owned at some point or at least played. It's the granddaddy of 3D board games, Mousetrap. Would you believe that this game is over 50 years old? It's true, Mousetrap was first introduced by Ideal Games in 1963. Yes, this game is 54 years old. I think of this as a vintage board game because it's from my childhood. My copy here is from 1993. But knowing that my mum used to play this as a kid, this is a true enduring classic. You can see from this 1963 copy to my 1993 copy to a modern day copy, the elements have barely changed at all. The game is very simple in how it plays and is ultimately a roll and move game. Players pick a coloured mouse and everyone starts at home. As you move around the board, certain spaces will have add a piece written on them. The box lid contains intricate and detailed instructions to build the game up. Look at this thing! Slide axle of gear through hauler and gear support too. Slot base B into game board, insert plug of base B into haul on board. This is like putting up an IKEA wardrobe. It astounds me that kids are able to construct this, much more to a point where it actually works. Looking at the pieces, it really tells a story. The components are all, for the most part, household items, and you get the feeling that the poor person who devised this madcap contraption was so completely sick of his vermin problem that he tore his house apart to create this mad Rube Goldberg-esque trap plumbing, bathtubs, guttering, his own boot, even the lamp force from outside. This speaks of a last ditch effort to snag those mice. The owner has a dog and a cat, what are they doing to stop these mice? The one game piece I've always wondered about is the diver. Is it a statue of a diver or is it an actual human stood waiting for this bowling ball to fling him in the air? Why would someone get a statue like that from the first place and why would you want it? If it's a human then why not just jump in a tub when you see the mouse under the trap? One other thing I want to say is that the game pieces seemingly vary in colour from set to set. Even on the box here, certain pieces are different to what you get inside. I've seen blue plumbing, I've seen green divers, blue seesaws. It's a bit of a lucky dip. As you progress around the board, the trap will begin to take shape. It's exciting to see it come together bit by bit. Replaying the game now, I was surprised to see how quickly it came together. I seem to remember it taking ages as a kid and being agonising waiting to see the thing completed. This particular game board has some interesting inclusions. Mouse tipsy, go back to. Look at this, he's drunk on a kid's game. Sick mouse, go back to. He's not sick, he's dead. Look at the X's on his eyes. The board has a number of spaces that serve to prank the player. If two mice here, go back six spaces. Come on. Do not add a piece. All the add a piece squares are white, so rolling and landing on this space, you think for a split second that you're adding a piece to the building of the trap. Right up until you read it. By far the worst is move to cheese. Oh great, thanks game, put me right under the trap. Jerk. Being moved back along the board isn't such a bad thing. It takes you further away from the trap space and when trying not to get caught, you're relieved to be moved further away from the danger. Most games, the trap will be built up by the time you reach the end of the path. The death loop, the hoop of doom, the circle of entrapment. Six spaces that loop infinitely round and round and round. The game quickly changes into a last man standing scenario. Sorry, last mouse standing scenario. It's ultimately luck that decides the winner. You can only crank the machine if you land on the crank space and if another mouse is on the cheese. Unfortunately, this takes forever. Replaying the game, it took half the entire playtime just for two mice to line up on those squares. This seems like such a cruel tease. You have this amazing looking contraption you're dying to see going. You land on crank but no one's on the cheese. Nope, can't turn that crank. Can't see the trap in action. The more players playing, the quicker this seems, but when it gets down to the final two, it becomes a game of cat and mouse. Um, mouse and mouse. So, here it is. The time has come. I am on the crank, you're on the cheese. Turn the crank and... <laughs> yes! The machine doesn't always work perfectly every time. In fact, the game fully holds its hands up and admits this. I can't decide whether this was intentional or not to have it work just some of the time. Whatever the case may be, it adds a tense element to the game. You're hoping the trap is up for you when you're under it. Fate always seems to have a laugh at your expense when it seemingly fails every time on your turn, but being flawless when your opponents do it. There is a downside to this though, but it taking so long to get a mouse on the crank space and the cheese space to activate the trap, and the trap not working, it gets incredibly irritating. You just want to see the trap work at this point. 
When the trap does work, however, this thing is spectacular. The crank turns the gears, the gears pull on the stop sign that springs forward and slams into the boot on the lamp post. The boot kicks the bucket, sending the ball rolling down the stairs into the gutter and bumping the helping hands. The hands push up and set the bowling ball rolling. It falls in the bath, through the bath and onto the seesaw. The diver flips into the tub, it shakes the cage post and the cage rattles to the ground. What a joy it is to see this thing working. It's over in around 20 seconds, but you'll want to set it up and see it going all over again. The mousetrap is still being made today. It's got updated box art, updated board graphics. I doubt there's any dead or drunk mice on the board, but same game component, same trap, same gameplay. There is, however, a new rule included. Around the board are these cheese squares. You land on it, you collect a piece of cheese. These pieces can be used in the Loop of Doom segment to really be vindictive to your foes. You can use a cheese piece to roll the dice and move your opponent's mouse, hopefully under the trap. I like the sound of this, you know by now that I love games with a bit of backstab into them. As enduring as this game is, MB tried to reinvent the wheel. They created a new mouse trap in 2004 that, again, is still being sold. The core difference with this version is that the game has multiple traps. It's random how these traps are activated. You flush the toilet. Yes, and a ball bearing is sent spinning which pops out of one of the three different traps. If I'm being honest, I'm not so keen on this variant of the game. The traps themselves are much shorter to activate and the chain reaction slash Rube Goldberg element is totally missing. It plays a lot like Ghost Castle or Incy Wincy Spider, where random traps briefly inconvenience the player. It's not difficult to see why this game has continued to sell for over half a century. It's fun, visually it looks spectacular and interesting, there's really no other game you can compare it to. What other games you assemble a bunch of random household objects to capture a creature the size of your thumb? It's one of those games where people of all ages can enjoy it and watching the trap in motion never gets tiresome. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.